Yeah, even though I, I was born and raised in uh, Frederikshamn i Danmark, og uh, har uh, været ganske mygget sammen med svensker i min barndom. Uh, I will even, uh, though, go on in English instead, um, for your sake. Um, <laughs> I work with um, Clio Online. Uh, for those of you, uh, probably a lot of you don't know that company yet here in Sweden. Uh, we are just uh, building up our company in Sweden, but in Denmark we've been uh, alive for uh, over 10 years now. And um, I hope if I get invited next year again, everyone in here will know Clio Online, because uh, we are uh, aiming for uh, uh, the same spread in, in Sweden as we have in Denmark. Um, <clears throat> in Denmark, we... Um, and in Sweden, our portals, we make digital portals, learning portals for uh, K1 to K10. Um, and we uh, have all subjects in Denmark right now, uh, except for math, uh, on our portals. And um, what we do is uh, we, uh, we supply the teachers with uh, digital software uh, that uh, gives them a lot of content for their subjects. Uh, and uh, the same uh, software is actually the student software, where the student can go in and follow along in their process, and uh, they can join activities, they can read uh, academic text about uh, the, the subject. And um, a very big point for us is that we're 100% digital. We do not make anything analog uh, for the teaching. Um, we see our tool as a tool. We are a tool, and we, uh, we use the tool to uh, bring uh, content into the classroom, but also to bring uh, a way of differentiating the, the teaching for the teacher, uh, a way of uh, scaffolding the content for the student, and we try to use um, all of the digital uh, features that we can uh, to, uh, to come in and, and make meaning of being there in a digital way. We try to see how can we, by being digital, uh, be an extra value to the teaching, instead of just being a book uh, connected to a wire. Um, so we actually uh, work very hard on developing features that gives this uh, tool an extra credibility as, um, as we go along. Um, <clears throat> I am uh, uh, lucky to be hired by this company because I, I totally agree with them when uh, I, three years ago, uh, put this plan uh, into uh, uh, place in, in the office in, the, uh, in Denmark um, because I said, um, why should we not, as 100% digital uh, teaching material uh, publisher of that, why shouldn't we uh, serve our digital conscription. If we could say this is, uh, this is an army, uh, we have uh, digitalized the Danish schools for years now, uh, and uh, we believe it so much that we 100% go out there and, and serve our content digitally. Then I think we should serve our digital conscription also. We have uh, we're in 90% in over 90% of the Danish schools. That's because that means that we actually every day we meet 90% of the Danish students. That's a that's a big deal. That's a lot of students. Uh, we have 24,000 followers on Facebook, and we send newsletters out to 4, 84, sorry, <laughs> 48,000 teachers. So we. We get pretty wide out. Um, maybe we should start telling why we're doing this. Uh, and maybe we should uh, put this uh, digital uh, mindset into uh, more than our tool and our content, but also uh, go and join the debate and join uh, the community about it, around it. In Norway, um, this is uh, just to show you a little bit about the Scandinavian countries. I was just talking to Christina about this. Um, in Denmark, I'm going to go to Denmark just in a second, but in Denmark, we have done a lot of digitalization about, uh, for the, schools, um, the school system. But what is different about Norway is that they have just made this Ramwerk. I don't know if you heard about it, some of you probably have. Uh, where they, uh, <coughs> it's called Ramwerk for Lernens Professionsfaglige Digitale Kompetence. 
And they're actually putting a lot of money and a lot of uh, investments into uh, telling how the teachers should uh, develop their competences in this area. Uh, when we go to Denmark, we uh, have done it in a different way. And maybe uh, uh, <laughs> to combine these two would be actually really, really great. And that's what we're trying to do with our teaching material. What we've done in Denmark is um, we have a common login solution. That means that uh, all the digital materials, not only ours, but all the digital materials, the software that has been made for uh, teaching in Denmark, um, can actually uh, get to use the uni login. And that's a common uh, login solution that we've made in Denmark. So every student logs in to the same uh, login feature and then they have the, the materials that the, the school has bought for them. So um, they don't have to think, of, you know, remember 10 logins. They don't have to uh, add their email to 10 different tools uh, and, and in that way jeopardize the data. Uh, they can use this uni login. It also makes it easier for the teachers because they're connected to the students' uni login when they have a class. So in that class, they can just follow uh, the students because they're connected by the uni login to their uni login. And that makes it very easy to, to make new software for these uh, uh, teaching uh, platforms and tools and features and stuff like that. Because uh, everyone can, can apply for this uni login if they have a tool that, uh, that meets the requirements. <clears throat> we have invested a lot of money uh, during, uh, especially after 2000. Uh, we've uh, we've made this uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, we, in every subject, you have IT and media going through the subjects, and IT and media uh, works in four student positions. The, stu the four student positions is. Uh, for example, the student as a creator, as a, pro a producer, as you were talking about just before. Uh, but also the student as a critical uh, person who uh, uh, reflects and, and acts critically uh, in the way of using digital materials and, and so on. Um, that is uh, put into uh, words in the Danish curriculum in all subjects today. Uh, so all subjects in Denmark have IT and media uh, somehow reflected in the curriculum and in the, in the end goals for, uh, for their uh, teaching lessons. Uh, IT in Folkeskolen was also uh, a big project in Denmark from 2000, I think it was 2004 it started. Uh, and uh, now, uh, the last uh, couple of years, ending here in 2017, is the increased use of IT, which was also a very big project and uh, <coughs> a lot of money was uh, spent on uh, enhancing the uh, use of digital materials in the schools. And that means that uh, if you bought uh, Clio Online's portals, for example, or some of the other publishers' portals or tools, you, your school would get 50% uh, from the state to pay for this. That has meant uh, a tremendous difference in Denmark because lots of schools have been investing in different tools and tried them off. And the reason why I've made this iterative process uh, illustration here next to it is because I actually think that that's what Denmark is doing right now. They're thinking, they're creating, and then they're testing, seeing, does this work? How does it work? You were talking about it before also. There was the same process where you, you catch up and see, how can, how can this work? Now we have to reflect. We have to go back and create something new from this. But remixing and, and all the way going through this iterative, iterative process. And that's actually where we are now, is we want the students to learn this iterative process also. That's kind of funny. So the last three points here on this slide is actually where we are right now. We're talking about computational thinking. We have the hashtag new IT subject. And we have just recently, here in August, <coughs> gotten uh, a new subject uh, in the lesson plan, but it's not a mandatory subject, it's a volunteer uh, subject for students uh, in 7th to 10th grade, where they can choose to have tech literacy um, as uh, an extracurricular subject. 
And uh, then we're trying that off, see how it works, pulling up some uh, experiences from that and see how can, we, how can we better that, how can we use that if we should make it mandatory. And the hashtag NUT ETFA is actually the debate going on in the media, in the social media about this. A lot of people in Denmark have opinions about this, probably the same in Sweden. Uh, and it's really, really interesting to follow that debate uh, online, also on Twitter and, and other social medias, but especially on Twitter. Uh, because um, there's a lot of people pushing here, uh, especially the, the IT industry. Um, we at Clearo, we are, uh, we're an IT industry uh, company. We have a, an IT company and then we have a publishing company, uh, both in-house. So we're two companies and one trying to combine those two. Um, what we try to do is our, this is our strategy for this when we decided to go into this. We want to focus on better IT infrastructure and that means that we have, uh, uh, together with Epignons, which is a big survey uh, uh, company in Denmark, we have made this big uh, market survey where we actually found out that uh, a lot of the problems right now with using IT is the infrastructure is not uh, living up to the standards that we, we need them to live up to. So we need to focus on that. Um, we also try to upskill teachers. Uh, we do a lot of free implementation uh, workshops with teachers, both online and face-to-face. -face. I travel around in Denmark, for example, <laughs> but I also make webinars. Uh, I make... Uh, uh, just small st small talks with people that write to me or call me on the phone. So we're we're very much there for our users. We're open and uh, we want to hear what the users think, and we also want to uh, catch up from what the ideas they have to be a, to be a better product for them. So we very much use the users here uh, in a in a good innovative way because we want to hear we're, we're a product for them. We're we're here to to aim for them. Um, we also have in our uh, portals a lot of teachers' guides, and that's one of the places where a digital material actually uh, gives something extra. And that is, uh, you can interactively go in and make a teacher guide where you need it in the, in the process. You can make it uh, a film, you can make it like a, a small film where you're showing what it means, it can be links to something, uh, it can be very multimodal. And it's, it's very much uh, a way of uh, giving the teachers all the help that they need just to, uh, to make sure that this is a digital tool that they haven't met before. How can they use it so they'll be in front of the teachers when they go into the classroom, uh, in front of the students when they go into the classroom. And, and working with digital tools, you will not always be in front of the students. The students will, will very much be in front of you because they, they're not because they know the tool, but because they're not afraid of using it even though they don't know it. So that's a big deal. IT in the classroom was also one of our strategies. We want to make a subject here because no one was making a subject and everyone was talking about it. So we decided to create this subject, to make a curriculum for it, uh, to uh, describe the goals for it, and uh, to actually make it <laughs> uh, able to just give on to our ministry if they wanted it. They didn't want it, but they made their own, but that's fine. Uh, but we made a, di a digital material to live up to this uh, subject also, and that's what I'm going to uh, show you too. Um, also, we made live stream debates. We went uh, out and invited uh, important people from uh, this perspective. Uh, the uh, chairman of the IT uh, um, organization, the chairman of the Danish IT guiders, counselors, uh, a politician, uh, a lecturer or a, a teacher's, uh, what, what do you call it? Um, uh, to be as uh, teachers at a teacher's uh, seminar. I don't, I have uh, teachers. Ladder with building, yeah. <laughs> uh, because we think that's an important thing to get on he here. No one is talking about Ladder with Bietlingen. Uh, and we wanted to bring that into uh, the, the talk also. And then, of course, the chairman of the teachers' organization. And who else should lead this debate than a student, of course, because that's who it's all about. So we got the chairman of the students' organization to lead this live uh, streamed uh, debate. It was actually very, very interesting, and a lot of people participated in this. We live streamed on Facebook. Uh, at the same time and, and invited everyone in Denmark to participate online in this uh, debate. 
Also, New York Times went to uh, visit us because they've heard that uh, in Denmark, the, the main reason that we started talking about computational thinking in Denmark was because we're needing the IT workers. And we're not only needing those in Denmark, we also need them in Sweden, in Europe, in all, and in the whole world. So that was interesting suddenly for the New York Times that someone in Denmark was doing something about this. And uh, I actually think that we're past, we're past that point where we're needing IT workers because we all know that. Uh, and this shouldn't be the reason why we should bring this subject into the school only. I think we're, we should put this subject into the schools because otherwise we will let the students down because they would be, uh, they would be inadequate adequate, uh, in this area if we don't start teaching them how to use the digital tools better. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, and also, our director was actually invited into a, a, a national TV debate about this also. So we very much try to join the debate, because even though we're a market uh, sales uh, company here, and we live from selling our products, uh, we also have a, 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 an agenda that, that actually thinks that we need to teach the students and the teachers how these digital uh, technologies actually could work in a better way in the classroom. Not only so they could buy our tool, because that's, that's only one little part of it. This is much bigger than this. Uh, but because we think otherwise we would let the students down and we would not uh, get them prepared for that future that's awaiting for them. Also, uh, one other thing that we do is we join national research projects. Uh, we've been uh, developing a software tool for uh, a researcher who uh, made um, a read engine. It's a, a, a scaffolding uh, a reading tool for, uh, for preschoolers who starts to read the, in the very, very beginning of the reading process. Uh, preschoolers can uh, use this tool and they can actually uh, work on the same text, all students in the class, and they can get a different kind of help uh, by using the tool. And in that way, they can end up working in the same uh, area and they can uh, work analytic, analytic about the text afterwards. They can read text that has not been uh, specifically made to, uh, to uh, read training, but uh, also to just uh, give it good experience in reading. Uh, so it's a, it's a tool that could not been, have been made in, in analog uh, procedures. So this is very, very unique. And we, did, we joined that uh, research project because we thought this is actually where we're going into a uh, blue ocean, uh, where we're, we can be part of something really, really new and exciting. Also, we have just joined game-based learning uh, in the 21st century project where uh, some researchers in Denmark is uh, uh, making a big project where uh, students should learn in a game-based learning uh, environment instead of uh, the normal curricular way of working. Uh, they should work with uh, uh, scenario-based, uh, um, I don't know what you call that in English, I'm sorry, scenario basil. Okay, you forstår. And, uh, and, and we are producing some of the materials for this because our platform can actually meet the requirements uh, of that uh, specific project here. So we all, t all t uh, the time try and, and see what is going on out there in the research area. Is there some way we can contribute to that? Uh, instead of just getting it afterwards, we try and contribute while it's, do it's going on so we get to be part of that iterative proce process where we're thinking, creating, and testing. Thinking, creating, and testing. And that way we all get smarter in this area. Um, my biggest fear, this is a quote from a book, a Danish book, but uh, I, I totally agree with it. My biggest fear is not smart robots, but stupid people. We need to teach uh, the students how this automation uh, area is actually working. Why are we uh, focusing on uh, robot technology? Why do we want digital teaching platforms? Uh, why are we talking about digitalizing the schools? Why are we talking about digitalizing the, the culture, the, the area? Uh, why have we uh, uh, tried working on uh, uh, cars that can drive themselves? Why is it so important? What is it we want with it? What is it we should fear from it? And what is it we should outsmart it with? Um, how can we be part of it? How can we be part of 
creating uh, this uh, new uh, society that we, that we are actually creating here. IT is not just another technology. Other technology stretches out physical ability. IT stretches our mental ability and gives us radically new possibilities. Uh, this is a quote from one of the guys, there were four guys, uh, girls and guys, um, that was um, formulating the new subject that we just got uh, as a uh, volunteer subject. And uh, uh, Michael Kaspersen uh, is saying this, that it, this is a, a new technology and it can do more than other technologies we've known before. So we have to think how how can it stretch our mental uh, uh, ability and how can it give us uh, radically new possibilities because I totally agree with him. Um, I would like to discuss that afterwards in the debate also. Um, Bill Ferreira, do you know him? Some of you may uh, follow him on social media. Um, if you don't, try and look him up. Uh, if you share the, the, the presentation afterwards, the link is in his name is uh, active. Um, what do you want kids to do with technology? And I actually think that's the most important question we can ask. Why do we want to use technology in the classroom? What is it that it can? And that's where I started also, that it can give an extra value in some way or another. Do we want to teach them how to make presses, or do we want to raise awareness? Do we want them to communicate out to the world and, and put things into uh, a new order? Um, a new communication, uh, do we want them to start blocks? Is it the tool block we want them to learn? Or do we want them to start conversations? Um, do we want them to actually make these little subcultures that we heard about in, the, in A1 just a minute ago? Uh, do we want them to, to think uh, different about the way of communicating, the way of sharing, the way of uh, creating this future society that we are going to be a part of, all of us? Um, Vygotsky, uh, he said uh, many years ago, he didn't know anything about digital literacy or computational thinking or anything like that. But he had a point when he said that by interacting with the media, both the child and the media changes, uh, that a tool, he was talking about a tool then, when you take a tool and you do something with it, both you and the tool will change. The, the pen that you're using will change in your mind because suddenly you can see the possibilities that this pen has when you start drawing with it. And also you will change because you will see that you can express something that's been going up only in here and suddenly you can put it out there. Uh, and the same goes on if you put this into the digital media, that the students, uh, the children of today, will actually they have already taken these uh, digital technologies into uh, their hand and start using them. And they've made them their own. And we have to teach them how they can use these so they won't uh, go, you know, they won't make too many mistakes on the way of learning how to use them, but also give them room to actually experience uh, everything about the tool and experiment with them. So uh, the innovation should go on here. Uh, we did the, the new subject and the teaching material, and um, we called it Digital Fail, uh, the digital subject in English. Uh, it's about uh, two areas of the, what we think is very important about digital competences. Computational thinking, which you also mentioned before. Uh, it's, uh, it's the way of thinking uh, so and, and expressing something that both a human being and a computer can act out afterwards. That means think in algorithms, uh, think in patterns, uh, see patterns where you can actually loop something that you can make, go, uh, make, uh, uh, go on and on and on, instead of make that uh, in, in, in 10 times, make it one time and make it into a loop. Um, and it, it means uh, think abstract about stuff. Um, and uh, the other side is the digital literacy, literacy side, the communication side, where we teach children to be critical in these medias, but also to communicate with them and be producers. Uh, but also the way of being a consumer, that they should learn what does it mean that I'm a consumer in this. Uh, there's no free ride. Uh, why should they be aware of that? Uh, and how should they be aware of how their data is being used out there uh, when they participate? 
Um, digital file uh, is a portal, it's a digital portal, and it has three uh, main areas. Digital framstilling, that's uh, maker spaces. Uh, programming, that's uh, the more uh, academic part of programming, algorithms and stuff like that. Uh, and digital communication. I will show you a little around. We have uh, different unit plans where we work with, you should all the time you should think about these two areas, computational thinking and digital literacy, and how they can actually work together here. We've made unit plans uh, about UX design, where the students learn the iterative uh, processes. We've made unit plans about uh, beginner coding, where they use block uh, programming. Scratch and micro uh, bits is the, the main tool that they're using here. Uh, we teach them how to code your own website and, and work with uh, HTML and uh, CSS and a little bit of JavaScript. Uh, we teach them about the history of the computer, because where did it all start? How did it begin? Um, how did programming begin? Uh, who was Ada Lovelace? That's the next unit plan you can find here. Um, she was the first programmer. And that she happened to be a girl is, is, is very, very uh, interesting in this case, because a lot of girls don't choose this area. So this is a way of putting that into uh, a context also. Then there's digital reading. Doesn't that uh, go on with the, doesn't that belong with the Danish subject, like you have svenska? Um, it does, but it also belongs here because uh, there's a new way of reading. And, and you can not only just say that uh, kids don't read as good anymore as they did when they were reading analog medias. That's, that's, a, that's a conclusion we've made, and it's true. They, they don't read as well. Why don't they read as well? I would rather we ask that. Maybe we should teach them some digital reading strategies. Maybe we should teach them that a digital text is not the same as an analog text. A digital text is a lot more complex. It's, it's not uh, uh, framed like a, a normal analog text is, and it, it acts differently than an analog text does. So it's, it's, it's a completely different reading process that you're using when you're using digital reading. It's about algorithms. It's about trolling. Uh, that's a big one. Hack uh, about hacking, uh, about putting the word hack and hacking into a positive uh, context where you actually use it to be uh, innovative and, uh, and experimenting with the digital technologies. Uh, Microbit Factory, uh, there is the game Stranded. Um, do you know that game? It's an open source game from the 90s uh, where you're you're left on a desert island and you should uh, use the code there to find your way around and you can actually go in and remix the code and in that way change the whole gameplay of that game. And that's what you're doing in this unit plan. It's about memes and it's about game changing, about uh, using game-based learning. And it's about robots and mindstorms and it, it keeps on coming here. Um, in, in the programming area, we're working with block coding, we're working with Python, uh, or the students are, uh, and they're working with HTML and CSS and JavaScript. Um, but they're also learning about algorithms and condi uh, conditions and loops and variables uh, because they need to learn how the coding is working. Uh, and they use coding here in a meaningful connection, so it's not just coding for the coding, uh, but it's coding where you actually put it into a context where you use it to produce something, to be creative, to uh, be communic uh, communicating something out to the world. Uh, so we try and see how can pr uh, programming here add as an extra value to the way we teach. I think uh, the... Uh, I, I forgot her name, but the, one, the teacher who was telling about how they use coding in, in art class, I think it was uh, so fascinating to see how they can actually put these two worlds together. I'm, I'm an educated art teacher myself, so I was like, yay, that's perfect. Uh, I really, really like when you can see out of the box here and see how can this actually talk together, how can we get the students to work with this tool and actually get something new into perspective here. Um, in tech literacy and uh, in, the, in the digital literacy area, we have Internet of Things, uh, World Wide Web. We teach about big data and how you make digital footprints uh, when you walk around on the Internet. And also, how can you be safe online? Uh, what is the social media? 
I think it's very important to tell the students that social media uh, is a place where you should act uh, just as nice as you do in a normal room when you're sitting next to next uh, with someone. But also to teach them that social media is part of uh, Web 2.0, which is, which is user-generated. That the Web 2.0 wouldn't exi exist here if you weren't here, you the student. So you're part of Web 2.0, and you're part of social media. Social media wouldn't exist if you weren't part of it, and you weren't contributing to it. And that's mainly what the aim here is. It's about YouTube. A lot of students are working on YouTube and they're publishing on YouTube. How can they uh, figure out what YouTube is, what kind of user-generated media is YouTube? Uh, it's about fake news and so on. You can see them yourself. What, uh, what I try to say here is that um, when you are a publisher and you make teaching materials to uh, students in K1 to, to K10 or even further than that, you should, uh, you should be aware of the responsibility that you're actually contributing to this digital competence field. That you're actually uh, part of raising this generation and how can you take that uh, that responsibility seriously, and how can you uh, put something out there that actually uh, gives the teachers and the students some extra knowledge that they can't get anywhere else. The problem, what we have been doing in Denmark, is that we've been building the house from, from upstairs and down because we put the subject out there to the students now, but we don't have a subject uh, where we teach the future teachers how to uh, teach in this subject. So I think maybe when should what Norway is doing more is they're giving the teachers, the future teachers, these competences. They're telling the, uh, the present teachers, this is the uh, competences that we think you should have if you, if you should teach in this, and then we would give you that extra uh, uh, education in this area, so you can teach our students how they can use it better. So maybe we should start building from beneath and, 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 and actually give the people who are going out there to meet the children, maybe we should give them the tools first. Um, we're not in that position, we can do that as a publisher, but we can try and, and aim both for the student and the teachers in our materials, and that's what we're trying to do. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. Thank you. Um, I'm always so fascinated when I hear about this because we were really inspired by your way of looking at the, the digital competence as mm -hmm. a, a fag or a, a subject with mm -hmm. different aspects. And we really took that to heart because yeah. we think we have to look at it in a broader sense. Yes. It's about more than programming. Yeah, yeah it is. It but I'm is. sure the audience <laughs> is aware of that by now. Yeah. Um, we are going back to Swedish for, mm -hmm. um, for Anders' talk. He's talking about the uh, knowledge that the students actually have uh, uh, 